And today here at Smithbotics, we will be talking about using extruded aluminum uh, with a num all the different fasteners and everything that you can use for this to make this uh, robot uh, chest. This is a chest area that's going to have um, multiple components, uh, starting off with our power battery packs. And um, we hope that you'll enjoy the video. So stay tuned if you want to know a little bit more about working with extruded aluminum. After a lot of work to cut these little pieces, I have the basics of my frame. Um, I've got four pieces that are in 16 inches, American inches. Um, we've got um, four pieces that are in 14 inches and four pieces that are in eight inches. Um, now I needed quite a few more than four of these eights because I'm going to be doing, this is going to be the, the um, kind of depth um, bar brace in between um, other items here. So it's going to actually make it 10 inches wide uh, for the, the test because each of these is one inch across. And I'll, I'll put uh, up little millimeter um, equivalents because I know, you know, people watch this from all over the world. Um, but basically, um, this um, uh, is going to be um, the system I'm going to use, extrude aluminum. Um, I, I looked at just the bar aluminum, and um, I did find uh, you can get like little plastic pieces that are, go inside the tubes so you can make joints and connectors. Um, that seemed uh, very easy to do, but it wasn't very practical for a robot that's going to be moving because then the very joints would be flexing and they're only made out of plastic. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe I'll just use the tube aluminum and I'll put like steel brackets here. That meant I have to drill a bunch of holes, put bolts in and stuff. Um, and then I started looking at extrude aluminum. thought, wow, this is probably overkill um, and maybe it would be too heavy. And it does have a little bit of weight to it. It's still aluminum, so it's very light. Um, but as you can see, there's a good amount of aluminum in there. So when I bought it in a six foot length, it was a little more heavy than I thought it would be because I thought, oh, aluminum, it'll be featherweight. Um, but it is pretty darn light. When you're looking at this, if this was steel, this would be pretty heavy. It's, it's not that heavy, actually. Um, so the reason I decided to go for this, I mean, some people use them for, you know, 3D printers. They, it's really easy to adjust things. You can, you use this little, uh, slot mechanism. Don't know if you can see it from that angle. Uh, we'll show you that in greater detail in a moment, but there's these little T slots that go into the channels and they're just a little bit. Uh, bigger and usually has some grips where it's just going to grip right there. If you have a nut going in there and the little T slots on the bottom, it's going to push against these aluminum rails like I did here for this little angle bracket. So there's a T slot underneath there and it's pushing up against these rails and really makes for a very tight and strong uh, connection. So little Allen bolt uh, screws there. And this is a, actually an aluminum uh, bracket. I'll show you a little more of some of those extra parts. So this is still, you know, pretty light in itself. Um, this is gonna be connected that way. And voila, I have a joint. There's another um, thing I'm gonna explore too that kind of goes into the channel and has, you know, an angle going in here, an angle going up there, an angle going there for the pieces to connect. So I'm gonna look at that too. But, um, yeah, I was really, uh, really liking this as a solution. Uh, not only does it give you a nice, strong, this is really strong. Uh, I guess because of the design, it just braces itself. It's very, it's no flex in that at all. So this is, it's a really strong material. It is pretty darn light, uh, even though it's got a lot of aluminum in there. And, um, 
Uh, you know, obviously it's recyclable as well. So if your robot ever gets obsolete, <laughs> God forbid, um, then, you know, worst case scenario, you can get recycled and become more extruded aluminum or aluminum cans or lawn chairs. So that's always a nice feature too. Um, but it does give you a lot of flexibility. So you do have to be careful about, you know, once you connect something, like so if I'm connecting this here, and I got an angle here, um, this is a captive channel. So if I hadn't already put something in there, knowing, oh, I'm going to put a shelf here or something like that uh, for another bracket, um, then you're kind of out of luck. Now, there is one piece I'm going to be um, probably getting, and it is a T-square uh, piece. I'll show you a little more of the parts in a moment um, that you can kind of slide in there. It's got a little ball bearing. So you can kind of cheat if you need to. You push that in there, and then you can put a screw on it with a bracket. So you can kind of do that even after it's captive, even after that, without having to take apart the whole thing. But if you had to, I mean, you could just unscrew this and take it apart and slide it in, and there you go. So uh, it does allow for a lot of flexibility, which, you know, in a prototype like this robot we're building is going to be extremely important. So, um, you know, let's say I put the shelf here for electronic components to be sitting on it. And I want to move it up a little bit. Well, I'll just untighten that and move it up and tighten it again. And there you go. So a lot of flexibility. That's why I chose this particular one, uh, this particular system of uh, material. Um, it's not super cheap. Um, it's about $5 a foot. Again, I'll put the um, millimeter um, references in the video, but about five dollars a foot. Um, you know, from the source I got, I just got it from Amazon. I just wanted to test it. There are other um, other sources. I think tslots.com is a good one, or tnuts.com. Um, I I haven't priced anything. I just wanted to get some samples. I did buy the first six foot bar of this for about forty. About, or actually probably about 52 53 dollars and um, that was with free shipping so it seemed pretty expensive and the reason I'm saying it's five dollars a foot um, is because you know that was with free shipping it came in a, a six foot tall box um, it was fine it wasn't damaged or anything it actually kept it in pretty good shape um, but you know the six foot oblong box uh you know about oh, maybe that big um you know it's coming from uh, 8020 inc which is a fine company makes good uh, quality product is is i'm very impressed with it um but uh yeah it was you know kind of pricey so when i checked on it again there was one other option which was instead of you know like 52 bucks it was um uh, 26 or 27 dollars for one plus about 25 dollars for shipping so okay pretty much around the same price but then what i realized and as i put it into the cart i could purchase and i, I needed to get um probably about four to start with just to have it for the robot chest maybe some uh, head part and maybe some starting on some arms um but I, I realized I could order more than one and the shipping price is still the same. So I ordered three six foot lengths of this, which gave me plenty of material for this particular project. And it, it worked out perfectly because it was only $25 for the shipping of the three. And I think I could probably, because it was, you know, the box was about yay big. So I bet you if you ordered multiple ones, you probably could get it pretty much um, even cheaper uh, and, and I ultimately will probably do that method um, but that brought it down to really you know I mean not counting in the shipping really about five dollars a foot so the shipping cost became a lot less so you know figure $25 divided by three rods now and if I had more of those at $25, maybe it's four or five, six, then you can see how, um, you know, the $5 base price uh, and the net price with the shipping will be a lot less.
So that's kind of what I did. I did a lot of work in cutting these down to these pieces. And we'll show you a little bit about some of the connectors um, that you use like this. Um, and then we'll start getting into the building of the chest for my new robot. Okay, this video is going to be um, a, about pretty much using uh, extruded aluminum for the most part because that's the bulk of the project. But I mean, ultimately, the reason I'm building this contraption is because I wanted to use it for my um, ultimate uh, dream robot, humanoid robot that I'm trying to eventually create. Um, and as I, I, I realize as I'm, I'm doing all these um, you know, different electronic projects, uh, different components, um, things that I'm creating, uh, the next one being a, a kind of substantial battery pack, I needed a place to put these electronics. And um, the design that I was um, leaning towards uh, essentially is a humanoid design. I may end up starting with some sort of wheeled base initially. Oops, sorry. Um, but um, I, I, I'm going to build this um, chest area here essentially to house a lot of the electronics, some of the base batteries towards the bottom. A lot of logic circuits here. Um, in this case, the robot's not going to think with components that much on its head. This will be primarily uh, sensor driven, um, a lot of sensors here, a lot of movable sensors, the vision sensor, the hearing sensors, uh, speech uh, center, of course, GPS uh, from his head, all sorts of things, uh, Wi-Fi. Um, so this is going to be pretty full with components in a relatively small area. So I've decided to have the robot think what it's its heart, essentially. So. All the uh, computer components that will control it are going to be here. Uh, and no, I'm not looking to make a 50 style box type robot. Um, I am uh, planning on uh, you know, making a square frame because things pretty much fit mostly that you get in square uh, areas or rectangular areas, uh, right angles and all that. Um, but I'm going to make some, uh, eventually I'll get a 3D printer and I'll make some panels that will attach to the extruded aluminum. And I could just use these channels to uh, essentially make screw holes. So the um, uh, the 3D printed uh, plastic parts can be on the outside, make for a nice smooth and humanoid type appearance. And I can change the look around as I need to, or you know, aesthetically I want blue or white or whatever I wanna put on there. I can do that. So that's kind of why I'm doing this um, robot chest frame today, uh, ultimately, uh, for my particular project. But again, extrude aluminum, uh, you, there's a lot of uses for it. So uh, you might be using it. I, I, said, I saw people use it for van conversions where they're putting a cabinetry because it just makes it really easy to assemble. And, um, you know, people use it all the time for 3D printers. I even seen um, portions of this maybe with like smooth edges that they use in construction. So uh, very versatile um, type of design. So this is essentially, and I, again, apologize, it's all in inches. So I'll, I'll put up the equivalent in uh, millimeters um, at the beginning of the video. But um, this is how I'm ulti ultimately going to design the chest area. Um, I'm probably going to have a shelf here and this will have our main initial battery pack, which will be one of my next projects you'll see. I'll put that on video as well. Um, I am having some bracing down here. Uh, this will be for the turret and waist area. So it'll allow it to turn and then bend over. That'll need to be connected somewhere to the chest. So that'll be it. Um, more bracing on top here. This will connect to the neck area. Um, uh, as well. Um, I'm going to have a brace here and a brace here, and this will be for the main initial shelf. I'm going to put a little space there between the components that are moving for the waist, um, but I'll put the main uh, initial battery pack there with a battery management system. Uh, and I'm going to have a, another set of braces here because this is, will be where the arm socket is going to be connected to. So this really needs to have some really good strength as well. 
So one here for that arm, one there for that arm. Um, I only did this one, this one, this one, and this one for the cross braces because I was pretty tired. But anyway, um, I'll get the other ones later. I think it's going to be plenty strong. As you'll see, there's some uh, joint braces I'm going to probably use on the outside here. Maybe on the insides, we'll see. I'm going to compare different, um, uh, you know, connection components that you can use for these. So you'll get an idea for that. But that's essentially the plan for my particular project. But yours may be different because extrude aluminum is a really nice and versatile product to use for a number of things. But that's going to be my project. So here we go. And it's time to um, kind of take a look a little bit about the connecting components that um, you can use. Uh, you notice this one now is kind of sliding all around uh, because I did loosen up the T-nut on here. So it just kind of shows you essentially if you had something where you need to adjust the shelf up a little bit, um, you can certainly make quick adjustments. So let me slide that out so you kind of see. Um, this is the actual T slot itself. Hopefully you can see that well enough. Um, it's just this little, it's a carbon steel. So it's pretty strong. Uh, you've got um, your hex nut there as well. Uh, these are what they call M3s. So it fits within these channels here. And let's see, just slide it in there. Oh, you gotta get it straight. Come on, get straight. Okay, there you go. Oh. Okay, well, it's hard to do this when you're looking at a, through the camera. Okay, so you, there you go, you see? Um, so it's going to hold that against that uh, rail. And once you tighten it, it gets actually pretty doggone strong. Some of the uh, T-slots even have like a little serrated edge, you know, just to kind of give it a little extra gripping power. Um, so that's, this is one component um, I'm going to use a lot. I'll put up the uh, price that I got this one for, but I got this from Amazon. Um, it essentially, it comes with, comes with all the T-slots, um, the angle brackets, uh, and uh, the, you know, the the T slots and the the uh, screws are all carbon steel. Uh, the the nice thing about it is these, which are pretty strong, are aluminum, so they're actually pretty light as well too. You notice that there's a little ridge here too, kind of a little something to catch on, and that catches on to the slot on both sides. So it's just an, a, a little extra part of that. You know, that keeps it strong from side to side. So it keeps it from kind of shifting around. So that's another nice um, feature. So I bought a number of those. Uh, this one seemed to be like a, a really important piece. So I felt I, I needed to have quite a few of those. Uh, and that'll be the probably the main connector, although there's another one here. I was considering as well. Okay, and that, this is the other ability to join three pieces together that I am considering. Um, this one comes with these little funny pieces here. I haven't actually even opened this one up yet. So let me open up one of those. Okay. So I'm considering this one. This one might be maybe not quite as strong. Um, it's a nice little piece, I believe. I believe that's carbon steel as well. Um, this is designed to kind of fit into a corner. So you would have one here. You'd have another one go here. And then you'd have the other one get two sides and go here so you would um essentially connect it um i think using something on the other side to kind of keep it uh, actually no i just it looks like this screws in here and puts pressure against the aluminum to keep it all together so it goes up a little bit 
I wasn't sure if I'm going to use these, and now that I'm seeing them actually here, I'm probably not going to use this, I don't think. Um, yeah, I'm probably, uh, probably that way it's meant to be. Yeah, that way it's meant to be. It doesn't feel like, even when I tie it down, it doesn't feel like it's going to be quite strong enough. So I may not use this particular option. But it's good to have because you might have some other part where you need a little more subtle connector, connection. Um, like maybe the you know head joints or something. So I'm going to consider that. Of course, I did get uh, extras. Uh, I think this is an M4. It's probably um, the M4 uh, is fine too. I think it just has to do with the millimeters uh, width. The M3s. As you'll see here, um, are the same exact design, even with a little serrated gripping part. Um, but they just, you know, they're a little bit, a um, little skinnier. So, have to get into those. <clears throat> I think that's something else too, and I'm not sure if, if I'm going to use this. But I'm just kind of trying to show you the variety of different parts you can get for these uh, T-slots. Um, this one is a hinged unit, so I'm assuming you can tighten that down and make it a little uh, less free moving. But I thought this might be because I'm going to have certain, of course, it's robot parts are going to be moving, so this might be something to use. It does have these little ridges to kind of help it keep it in place, and of course, you know. You can actually take out the screw so you can get into the uh, part where you got to tighten down the T-slot and then just screw it back in and then you have you know this piece that's going to be able to move around so I'm, I'm considering that <clears throat> I don't know how <clears throat> practical that will work for some of the applications but um, I may have a use for that <clears throat> so being the parts hoarder that I am, obviously I had to buy it. But this part I'm definitely going to use. These are aluminum corner plates. And <clears throat> they are aluminum. So they're very light. But they're really strong. <clears throat> so this would be something I would use to essentially connect two sides. Um, I'm, I'm still going to use this. So I'll have um, this part in there. I should check it out. Okay, I'll have that part in there. I have um, you know the other beam here, and then I'm going to put this on there as additional strength. Um, so I, I thought that would be that would make it a really strong connection. Just use a smaller piece just for demonstration purposes. So that'll just even make it even stronger. So I still have this component in there, but um, for those parts where I really just need a lot of strength, because there could be a lot of torquing and flexing, this will give me a little more oomph to that design. So yeah, I'm gonna be using these. Um, I only got four because I wanted to test it out. I'll put up the, the price on the video as well. Um, and uh, I think this is going to be a nice addition. I'm going to have to get some more of those because um, I was thinking maybe just the bottom portion, but I might want to put some on the top as well. So that's another kind of um, piece that you can get for that. Uh, let's see, those are more of the other ones, the angled ones, which I'm not too sure I'm going to use. Um, you can also get these little kits. Um, this was a nice uh, sliding T-slots, and I think that was tslots.com. Uh, was that other site where they sell extrude aluminum and a lot of these parts too. Uh, didn't get into it too much. The extrude aluminum looks like there might be some good deals, but there's a lot of variables, so uh, I, I didn't have time to get into that yet. I may if I start getting a lot more of these pieces. So. But this particular one's from Amazon, and um, it did give you 60 um, M5 T-slots, uh, 80 M3 T-slots, and... 60 m4 t slots so gives me a little more variety skinnier a little thicker a little thicker so 
Um, obviously the bigger ones give you a little more uh, strength, a um, little more surface contact area. But it's nice that they you know, have these kits. Of course, I always love little component kits. Um, but should I run out or you know, maybe one of these packages has one less or I just need to kind of get something prepared for something I'm going to put in there, um, you know, I, I have these available. So that's kind of the components. You're, you're pretty much, these are mostly all hexed um, um, or Allen wrench uh, type. So pretty much um, using my metric um, Allen wrench and tightening those down. And that'll be kind of what I'm gonna be doing for this particular project. Um, but uh, you will need an Allen wrench for those. And um, this just gives you an idea of all the different parts you can get and stuff that you can get for these to connect them. There's a wide variety of products out there. Um, so you can really find the one that fits best for your particular extruded aluminum project. So time to get into putting things together. Um, here, here is uh, the construction so far. Uh, corners were kind of difficult to kind of get in there, but uh, did get them all set. It's really strong. I mean, there's some flex up here, but those are for you know those are long runs up. Um, these braces are just sitting here; they're not in yet. These ones are all set. Um, I did find out that I ran out of these little braces here, so I am going to have to order some more. As you can see, it's pretty stable, nice structure. That's going to make for a substantial, essentially, rack uh, that's going to hold all the electronic components of the robot's chest. So, yep, got to order some more of these uh, parts here. Going to order a few more supplies as well, another bracket for the bottom. You do really have to think about essentially how you're going to put it together because if you, you're not careful, you end up tying something down and realizing, oops, how do I get that into that slot? So, yeah, something to think about with extrude aluminum. Um, but so far, pretty good. Just have to get some more parts. And once we do, we'll continue the construction. But that's kind of how it looks so far on my very messy desk. The robot chest is constructed for the most part. And we do have um, some parts still to put together, of course. Uh, we've got our top rail together. I'll just kind of go down here a bit, show you some of the pieces. Um, got some extra bracing on the bottom here. And you see there's a, a little kind of shelf there and a little angled uh, bracket there as well too. That's going to be for a shelf that's going to go across the bottom. You see it on the other side as well. So we'll put some cross beams here, essentially from here to here. Um, where's my... Well, this isn't the right piece, but essentially that'll go across here, and then that'll be a shelf that we'll have here, a plastic shelf going across here, and we'll have the batteries set up here. And although the place is a mess, those are the batteries we're going to be sticking in there. So some chunky monkeys for that part. Um, the frame seems to be in pretty good shape, and these are nice brackets. Did put in some some brackets up here. This is going to be for the arm joints. And the arm is going to have to be connected here, so it's going to have extra stress. So I figured not only would I put these particular kinds of brackets, but I put on these additional aluminum side brackets for extra support. So I was all using this, um, you know, these T nuts here. These are some really nice ones that came with the bracket. So I've been kind of rating them. Uh, there's, they give you more than for these particular kinds of brackets. So that was kind of nice. Um, so I've been kind of rating those for some of the main components, but I do have other ones. These, these ones are okay. Um, they actually are so skinny that they will fit into the side here. 
It's just you have to twist them around to get them to work essentially like that on the inside. So because of that, you could put things on afterwards. You just have to you know, position it on the inside so that it ends up like that. If you go the other way, you see it just falls right in. So it could fall right out. So, um, but you know, it does allow you to get something in before, um, after you've kind of closed out the channel. I got some other parts with some ball bearings, but I don't think they're going to work. I think they're the wrong size. So it's been a little challenging kind of getting some of these um, pieces right. This is um, 80, 20, uh, 10, 10, 10 uh, series extruded aluminum <clears throat> and um, pretty strong. I just need it. This smaller size, which is about, it's about um, one inch in diameter and um, Makes for a pretty strong structure. This really make, gives some beefiness towards the bottom. That's going to connect to the um, leg section and it's going to need to flex. So those extra braces on the bottom, I think, are going to help. Um, but that's pretty much the main construction here. I'm going to put in some cross braces here. Still have to cut those. And again, that'll be <clears throat> kind of giving some strength to the arm connection part. And then this will be our battery. This will probably be the first project we utilize the uh, chest casing for. Uh, we're going to put in uh, those two bars <coughs> across here, all the way across. This is not the right size, of course. And um, <coughs> a plastic shelf on top of that, which will be bolted in. And that's going to hold our <coughs> battery pack. So that'll be another project we'll be doing. So it's getting there. It's a little big, but, but and <laughs> cumbersome, but there it is. All right, here we go. Um, we have this, um, these last two members put on here for the robot chest design. Uh, we have um, a double bracing down here, a strong bracing on the side, of course. This is gonna be the shelf that's gonna hold the battery so uh, and power supply. I'm gonna have a nice sheet of plastic here. That's why I left in these little connectors here. As you see that I can undo them and slide them into exactly whatever position I do want. So those are all set. Also put in some th these uh, little bars here that connect to this. Quite a pain to get them in. I had to make sure that uh, the little uh, connector T-slot wasn't rotating, so I got it in just the right spot. But as you see, it, it is in. It's nice and strong. So this is going to have the arm unit coming off of it. So with these braces, that should give it plenty of support. So we've got um, bolts all around. There's also another brace on the inside here that has um, something going in there and something going in there. So yeah, it uh, should be pretty strong. The next um, thing we're gonna be doing just before I wrap up um, this particular phase of the project, it's gonna be this um, shelf right here. So we'll put in a little plastic um, sheeting, little room on the sides for cabling and everything to go up. That'll just hold, that'll be the plate that's gonna hold the batteries. That'll be another video and the power supply. Um, but once we get that done, this robot uh, chest frame made out of extruded aluminum shall be done. So just about there, put this plate on and then you'll get a little idea of, of how that looks. So there it is in all its glory. And it does pay to check sometimes. Um, I went ahead and I cut my plastic for this little shelf here. This is going to hold the battery pack and then a power supply, probably power supply in the back. But I forgot I put in four of these. I only drilled three holes on each side. So I'm going to have to drill another hole. Um, but I'll do that and we'll get that together. And you'll see that in a moment. And that should be our completion of the main design of our robot chest. Extruded aluminum robot chest has been completed with the Final uh, step of putting in this um, corrosion resistant uh, shelf made out of plastic. It's fairly lightweight. 
really easy to drill through but pretty pretty durable and strong so it's going to be strong enough to hold up our lifebo 4 um, battery pack uh, lithium iron oxides um, battery packs that we've chosen to use so we're going to do uh, going to make this into a battery pack in a, a future episode that you'll see so stay tuned for that but uh, we're going to use um, essentially these holes in these little braces here and we're going to have zip ties go through the bottom of those and just fasten that down. We'll, we'll put shrink wrap over the whole thing to protect it, um, but that will these holes will be exposed, so we'll be able to tighten the whole unit down. Uh, of course, we're going to have a battery management board on the side there to take care of uh, that component. And we've also got this um, nice little power supply from Amazon.com. Essentially, it's going to allow us to plug into um, 120 volts uh, AC although it does have a switcher for 240 uh, volts uh, should that be the power AC power of your particular region uh, we're going to do the same thing on that one too where we just basically take some twisty ties and we'll, we'll be you know tying it all the way down here and keep that uh, kind of stable maybe a little something on the bottom keep it from rattling around so that is our extruded aluminum robot uh, chest project um, this is just uh, the first basic uh, structure that will allow us to put our robot in physical form uh, now it's time to put in all the electronic uh, components we'll start with uh, the um, battery uh, pack soon and of course power supply that uh, goes with that uh, and then we'll be able to add another shelf here we'll be able to put additional electronics and computers, microcontrollers, uh, microprocessors, um, all along this uh, area above here. So that should give us enough to start the robot. The, what the main thing is the robot is now in physical form. It's not just an idea. It is becoming a robot. Very, very slowly, of course. But um, thanks for watching. We hope that you enjoyed this um, video on essentially the construction techniques needed with extruded aluminum and hopefully you can find that uh, useful in anything else that you might be doing so uh, as usual uh, please do subscribe if you feel um, that you would like to um, certainly would love that um, and of course you know give us a like if you like it too and let us know if you know uh, you have any other ideas or suggestions um, because this is a work in process and i am by no means an expert but I am learning and hopefully um, everyone watching this will learn a little something too if you know maybe not like hey don't do it that way uh, <laughs> we'll see but thanks for watching and I do appreciate that you checked out our video take care